Oil, oil, oil. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Um, I had a, quite a few people actually recently ask me about auger bits and so I thought I would uh, do a video on that. And there are many, many different types of auger bits and styles. Um, and so how do you sharpen them? Uh, what do different types do and what are they good for? So let's take a look at this and uh, see what we can learn. So let's look at a few other types. Uh, the most common one you're going to find at a garage sale um, is this type. It has a uh, it has a two blades, but it only has a single spiral. One of the blades, the spiral stops at that point. Whereas sometimes you'll find a double spiral where both blades have a spiral that completes all the way up the shank. And uh, the way these work is they have a knife that cuts the hole, but they also have a nicker on the side that cleans the hole. So this nicker is the very first thing to touch the wood well after the screw. And the nicker determines the diameter of the hole. And the nicker will actually kind of score a circle, and then the blade comes through and cleans out that circle. One of the other common things you'll see a lot of times on the bigger ones made for more of your post work, uh, this monstrous um, two inch, which someday when I have a use for it, I will clean it up. But until then, um, yeah, it's a pretty big booger. Um, it has a blade. It doesn't have a nicker out here. So the blade will determine the size of the hole. And then there is sort of a nicker, but it hangs down. Um, and so that's the last thing to touch the hole and that will kind of clean it out. This will still leave a little bit more rough of a hole than having the, the knickers touching first. But uh, it works fairly well and it is very fast and efficient. The next thing you're gonna commonly see is an adjustable. Um, and this is kind of, uh, kind of like two different cutters in one. So if you look at it from the end, it has basically a traditional um, screw nicker and blade that's about three quarter inch diameter. And so that is just like a, a standard auger, but then it also has this other blade that comes out here with a whole nother nicker and blade. And uh, this basically will then cut a three quarter inch hole and then have another nicker that comes out some particular distance and cut another hole around it. So you're sort of using two bits at once. Um, a couple problems with this is number one, there's only one cutter per size, so it's kind of slow. And number two, there aren't um, screws running out the side to remove the dross. Um, so you kind of have to uh, uh, pull it out occasionally and clean out the hole if you're going too big. It also has a tendency to wobble because all the force is off to one side. But uh, even with that, it goes fairly well and it's a useful tool. You just have to make sure you have enough force behind it. So before we talk about the augers themselves, I want to talk about the files a little bit. Um, now this is basically the, the standard file you're going to find anywhere. And it has ridges on both of its faces, but it also has ridges on the edges, um, on both of the edges. And so you have to be careful if you're filing up against a side that your file on the edge doesn't hit it as well. They make files that are specifically for augers, and they're usually shaped like this. And in this case, you're going to find that you actually have um, filing on the face on one end, and the other end, the, the face is smooth. And then on the edges, if it has ridging on the face, it doesn't have any ridging on the edge. And if it was smooth on the face, it has ridging on the edge. So you can use the edge or you can use the face. And there's what is called a safe edge or a safe face that has no grooves on it. What this allows you to do is file up against something, but then that edge, that edge doesn't actually cut into something else that's at 90 degrees to it. So you can file safely without hurting something. So uh, you'll often find these, um, well, you'll find them online, but they're pretty hard to find at garage sales. Um, and when you find that whole, f that whole pile of files for sale, um, Every now and then you might find one of these in there, but they're, they're fairly hard to come by. Um, if you look at your files, occasionally you'll find files with a safe edge, and you can use those. Um, just uh, be very careful with when you use them that you're not 
over grinding a corner. So one other note about augers um, is how they are sized. Uh, most of the traditional ones actually have a number stamped into the tang, and that number is how many sixteenths of an inch wide it is. So this is eight sixteenths, or one half inch. This one is sixteen sixteenths, um, so it could be a five sixteenths or whatever. And so they're usually from a quarter inch all the way up to one inch. In other words, they would be four sixteenths all the way up to sixteen sixteenths. Now the actual filing is uh, fairly straightforward as long as you understand it. Um, basically, the first thing to come in contact is the screw. The second thing to come in contact with is the knicker or spur. And then the third thing is the blade that removes most of the waste. So the screw is the power horse. That's what pulls it through the wood. The knicker or spur is what shapes the hole. It's what gives it its, its dimension. And then the main cutter is what removes all of the waste. So we want to sharpen all three of those things. Uh, so let's start with the screw. Very rarely do I actually address the screw. I try and leave it alone. Um, the only issue is if it breaks off or is it gets um, one of the spurs burnt, bent. Like uh, on this one, the screw is actually bent off. And so what I would actually take is a saw file that has a 60 degree angle and slowly file those back in until I actually get a nice sharp screw again. Getting a very sharp point is extremely important. So I'll use a saw file for that with a triangular shape. Uh, these, um, just because it's a 90 degree edge, they will give you the wrong geometry in a groove. It's a fairly simple process and I don't have to do it very often. It's just when I'm like restoring a bit or it dropped off the table and the tip snapped. Um, so I don't want to do that very often, and if it happens more than once or twice, um, you may end up with a worthless auger bit. The other thing I will do with it is a lot of times you get this clogging with, it, with all the uh, wood chips, and so I will grab a hook or a screwdriver and just kind of pop those out. Um, they, that's also a sign that the threads might be getting a little dull, is that it gets clogged up. So I just clean those up. Occasionally I'll add a little bit of oil on a rag um, and, and keep this nice and slick. But uh, that, they're fairly straightforward. I generally don't mess with them on an average basis. The next thing is the knicker. Now this is where most people will mess up with it, is they sharpen the outside of the knicker. And the outside of the knicker is what determines the diameter of the hole. So if you sharpen the outside of the knicker, you'll be reducing the diameter of the hole over time, and this will no longer be accurate. What you want to do is sharpen the inside of the knicker. So you use your file with a safe edge and you just give it a few strokes. Like that. And I'm focusing on the very tip of the knicker and then the leading edge of it. I don't want to mess as much with the back of it. It's not as important. But the, the very tip is what cuts and then the leading edge, the edge towards the blade um, those two items are what will determine your hole saws, your hole size. The next thing is the blade. Um, and generally speaking, you don't want to sharpen the top of the blade because that will lower the blade. And if it gets too far away from the spiral, you start getting some issue. Um, so you want to sharpen the bottom of the blade. And so I will put the, the tip down into my bench and then I'll come across again with the safe side of the file so that I'm not wearing into the shank of the file, of the bit. And just like before, a few quick passes. I like to sharpen away from the uh, the angle. Some people like to pull towards the angle. <clears throat> I just like to keep the, the burr as clean as possible. And so I'll just uh, keep going until it feels sharp. And uh, you don't have to worry about them being absolutely razor sharp. Some people like to come out with them with a diamond file and clean those down and make them a little smoother. But for me, um, as long as it feels sharp, it's fine. It's going to cut just as well. And uh, if you maintain these and sharpen them well, they will last you a long time. So then we can take this to the next level and look at an adjustable screw. Um, and on this one, I actually want to take it apart for sharpening. It just makes things a little bit easier. So I'll pull out this connector screw and then I can pull out the whole blade and worm screw. And this is a good time to oil it up and clean it up. And basically on this, you are then looking at a single knicker and a long blade all the way along here. And so with the long blade, sometimes I'll just get a regular file and quickly go along it. I want to be careful. I don't want to get right up against that knicker. Then I'll bring out the one with the safe file and 
Get that edge nice and clean, and then clean up the knicker. So just like before, um, only on this one with the traditional augers, you're getting underneath the blade to sharpen it. With this one, there's, there's no way to get underneath it, so you're just doing the top of the blade. And then you're also going to be cleaning the inside of the knicker, not the outside of the knicker, because the outside of the knicker is what determines the diameter of the hole. And then on the main shaft, it's just like with the regular knickers, uh, with the regular blades, you're cleaning the inside of the knicker again, and then you're going to clean the underside of the blade. So just like with a standard bit, just like that, and you have a nice sharp blade. It really doesn't take much, especially if you maintain them. Um, you know, just a few strokes of the file will bring that edge nice and back. They're not made of a really hard steel, um, so they're, they're fairly easy to work with and uh, fairly functional. Then you can put the whole thing back together and go to town. So once you understand the basics of what to sharpen, uh, the underside of the blade and the inside of the knicker, uh, you can really go to town on most any um, auger. There are a bunch of other ones in different types, but uh, they're all basically the same thing. Inside of the knicker and the underside of the blade. Um, unless there is no underside of the blade, then you have to do the top side of the blade. So that's about that. So I hope this was fairly informative to you. Um, there are other types of augers out there and uh, they are going to be uh, sharpened in slightly different manners. But these are really some of the most common augers you're going to find and the most uh, simple ways of, of sharpening. Uh, you will find other uh, uh, other augers get sharpened slightly differently, but uh, if you understand the geometry and how they're supposed to cut and what actually makes the holes, um, you start to see how they should be sharpened. As you, you don't sharpen the outside of an auger because that will change the size of the hole. But as long as you keep that careful, um, you will find that these will treat you very well and become extremely efficient. Uh, they pull through the wood very, very well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you have any other questions, I would love to hear those. I might be able to uh, answer them right then and there for you. And uh, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are incredibly phenomenal and a huge, huge encouragement to me. So thank you for that. If you did like this video, you might find you like one of the others. And until next time, have a wonderful day.